Welcome to this care collab on Catlia Moscom. I'm teaming up today with Gaila's orchids and Sveti's orchids. Moscom being the combination of the two parents from Catlia Mosnor and Catlia Sidelscom. Mos and Com combined Moscom. She is a variegated Catlia that has had me running around in circles trying to figure out what is best for her. My orchid doesn't look very pristine and we will get into that because that is why I've been running around in circles, boggled in my mind as to what does this orchid need so that I avoid the burning of the variegation plus get it to bloom. Needless to say, ideally a care collab comes together when there is an orchid being featured and in some channel there has to be some blooms. So the link for both channels are in my description and let me tell you, there are blooms. While you're here with me, looking at my ratty little Catlia Moscom, listening to what I've done wrong, what I plan to do to improve on getting the right ratio of light for this orchid so the burning will stop on the variegation, that is what I'm going to talk about today and give you a little bit of a background because we've only seen her in tours when she does the beautiful thing of growing new growths. And I talk about how I promise that this time I'm going to get it right and my new growth will not burn. I got her in 2018. She was a small little thing. Everything that was in the back was very clean. There was no burning. There's one thing I did notice though, was the new growth she was coming with was already showing calcium deficiency. So my first port of call was this orchid needs a lot of calcium. We got over that hurdle and she settled in very, very nicely into my setup, which is Lekka and self-watering. I'm here in southern Spain, very close to Gibraltar, and my summers can get very, very hot. Perfect climate for Catlias. My winters can be far too cool because I do not supplement with heaters in my grow space, nor do I use heat mats. So this orchid has to tolerate a few months of conditions that she absolutely would prefer not to have to deal with. My temperatures range from 14 degrees Celsius all the way up to 40 degrees Celsius, sometimes a little hotter. 40 degrees Celsius is pretty rare. I usually average around 32 to 30 degrees Celsius during the summer months. But yeah, the minimum temperature in the winter can be 14 degrees Celsius where she lives. And it appears to me that at least she's holding on, even though she would prefer it at least to be 20 degrees at the coldest. So the Lekka and self-watering setup helps me a lot when it comes to a watering demands throughout 80% of my year. The worst case scenario being hot, dry, no humidity. I have to counteract that. And the 20% that I have to navigate, I am very, very conservative with how I handle this orchid fertilizer-wise, watering-wise, not losing my Lekka efficacy throughout the winter by letting it dry out at all. That is when the little bit of a dance begins. Basically, for the 80% of the year, I can water this orchid without having to worry about any kind of problems in the pot. It is warm enough, she absorbs everything fast enough. In the winter, I have to be very, very conservative with what I do with her. She does not grow any new growths in the winter including new roots. All that happens during the warmer months of the year. So pretty much this orchid in the winter does not get any fertilizer. She gets the occasional flush and I let the pot drain out. I do not fill the reservoir again. My main concern is not to lose the wicking efficacy of my Lekka. For that reason, the microfibers will always be damp, but there is no watering per se. It is all just a flush. As we are heading into the growing season, a month ago I started with a seaweed application at 40 parts per million and filled the reservoir halfway. That is what you can see in here. And you can see that she is still not absorbing everything really well. Now you might say, well, a whole month of that seaweed solution in there? I have flushed her through in between those times. I have just kept the reservoir as is. 40 parts per million is only there to boost a little bit of what the orchid is doing naturally. She is starting to grow and swell up new eyes at the base. And I'm trying to encourage that by giving her the little hormone boost four weeks ahead of time, just to, you know, tell her, I see what you're doing. 
Here's some help with the seaweed. I still haven't fertilized this orchid simply because our spring has been so, so cold and the orchid will not respond unless she also has the light levels to back up. I did not have the light levels to back up what the calendar was saying was time. So no fertilizer because I do not want anything to grow weak and lanky. I'm hoping that in a couple weeks all that will be history because by that time I want to go straight in with 300 parts per million as soon as possible to support what this orchid requires. Her variegation doesn't allow for a lot of photosynthesis. It is a very beautiful foliage, even if the orchid isn't in bloom, and I've thoroughly enjoyed that the past years while I've been figuring it out. Of course, I kicked myself for constantly burning it, but let's talk about light. My sunlight here is probably a little bit harsher than in other areas of the world where this orchid is grown. And even though I thought I was being very, very careful, I just figured that, well, variegated. She doesn't have a lot of chlorophyll. She needs higher light. We know cattleyas need high light in order for them to bloom. So that was the balance I was trying to find. When she arrived with me and her first new growth started, she lived on the middle shelf of my blooming alley, whether she was in bloom or not, thinking she's plenty protected there, but she would get the weak morning sun and possibly sometimes through the trellis, she would get the late afternoon sun, which is also relatively weak. It didn't work. This was the growth that she came with, where you can see it had the calcium deficiency on the top. And while it matured in my care, the variegation burnt. The next year I did pretty well. This growth stayed relatively clean until the following year when I was a little bit more bolder, thinking that I had acclimated the orchid enough and she can take a little bit more sun as in the sun that I was giving her prior. I didn't reduce the sun levels and promptly I was taught differently. It just kept on going. So I haven't had this orchid bloom for me because I've been figuring out the light level since 2018. She has tried with sheaths. Every growth has produced a sheath, but they promptly dried out. And I was thinking, well, maybe this orchid would like to have a dry sheath before it starts to push buds, as with other cattleyas. That is not the case. So I figured, okay, my challenge is on to get the light levels correct and just keep her a little bit more protected. At least if I never get this orchid to bloom, her growths will give me joy. And lo and behold, look at this. I've got buds in that sheath. That sheath is still green. And I've had this orchid in much more protected area in my blooming alley on the lower shelf where there is no risk of any sun coming in during the warmer months of the year because there is a curtain, there is no light filtering through in the morning and she is tucked behind other pots. So she was in super bright shade, no direct sun. Even if it was weak sun, it did not reach this orchid on the lower shelf. And during the winter, she has been in a lot of darkness. I have had to supplement with artificial lights, but only like five nights during the past four months. I have been extremely conservative with any supplementation for reasons. So I figured she is not going to bloom for me this time around either because she had nothing to work with. She was in the middle shelf of my rack in my grow space. Sometimes she got a little bit of sun during the winter because of the angle of the sun if it wasn't a cloudy day. But let me tell you that for 90% of the time, she had the kind of light that the Phalaenopsis complex hybrids would enjoy. Not exactly ideal for a cattleya, you would think. Having said that, throughout all these months, the sheath did absolutely nothing, but it maintained its green. And I was thinking, well, that's the first. It's staying green. It's not drying off. What is going to happen next? And what's happening next is that she has got buds in that sheath. I cannot tell you how surprised I am. Now, the fact that I brought her out of that location to film her out here, we've got a little bit of sunshine, but as you can see, it is very windy. It is a very cold wind as well. It is possible that I'm risking bud blast by having brought her out. I don't mind if that happens. I am more concerned about continuing to grow this orchid healthy. Yes, I would be thrilled to bits if these buds were to bloom out, 
even if I only get one bloom so I could document it. But having gotten to the point of understanding that her light levels, although we think cattleyan light needs to be high, the moss comb doesn't need that much. Or let's put that into perspective, in my environment with the stronger light, the harsher light, she doesn't need that much. So it's going to be interesting to watch the other videos and see what light levels they give to their Cattleya Moscom in order for them to have bloomed them out. And my personal interest is, of course, how is the variegation holding up with the light levels provided? Pests have never been an issue on this orchid, so it's not as if I had any problems and that is why other sheaths did not bloom out. I am gonna boil it down to the fact that this orchid needs a certain size, a certain maturity, and enough storage organs to work with. And that is just my conclusion, having watched this orchid for the past four years. She had one repot since she's been with me, and she's been growing one new growth every single year. And having seen that these eyes at the base, right at the back, are also looking promising, I'm not gonna get greedy though, thinking that they might also be on the move and produce more growth. One new growth per year. I hope that she can keep up with that rhythm. I would be very, very happy to one day actually take her out and then section her off in the back to propagate her and start a second one because I have really been trying to figure out the best, best influence of light for this orchid for many, many years. And I'd like to test it a little bit further just to see if eventually in two or three years time, I have two pieces and they will both bloom, growths are clean on much lower light levels. So I'm just going to put another thing out there that I have also seen leaf damage like this on orchids that have been exposed to cold. This is the first year that I've had my orchids way too cold for my liking and their liking. And this growth here, is the growth from 2021. And it, you can see there are no signs of any kind of damage to this variegation, this leaf, as per the previous years where I did supplement with some heating. So I want to eliminate the fact that this is cold damage. If that were the case, this leaf would be showing same signs as well. I also want to eliminate the fact that this is fertilizer burn. If that were the case, this leaf would be showing it as well. Seeing as my fertilizer and supplementation has been the same steady process through all the years. If anything of what I mentioned just now were to also be a reason for this, then this growth would be showing the same signs. It's not. I'm gonna continue with my 300 parts per million. I'm gonna continue supplementing with calcium and magnesium at 60 parts per million once a month and my seaweed at 40 parts per million as well. And now I'm gonna take my orchid inside, put her back where she has been living during these past four months in the hope that the wind has not had a negative effect on the buds and we possibly will get to see a Cattleya Moscom as a first time bloomer at Ninja Orchids. Once again, if that should not happen i am a-okay with that and that is a step in the right direction and the most important thing of all let me tell you something that in the past i have absolutely had no problems with the fact that this orchid wasn't blooming i was busy trying to figure out the rest of her that the bloom thought never really occurred to me, especially because she produces such, such cute growths. They are so adorable. They are fresh green, and then they come up with the anthocyan and speckles and freckles as that growth matures. That in itself is a treat, and a new growth developing lasts much, much longer than blooms. <laughs> That's what I've been telling myself over the past four years. My only frustration with this orchid has always been I've burned the variegation again and I vow not to do it with the next growth. <laughs> I hope I can from now on keep my new growths clean and eventually maybe we'll see some blooms on this channel. But head over to the other channels, the links are in the description because there are blooms on those videos of Cattleya Moscom. I really appreciate your time. I hope that this was helpful if you're struggling with your Cattleya Moscom. If you're thinking of getting one or if you've heard someone else that is struggling with the Moscom, maybe this video gave you a little bit of an insight into what needs to be done, what can be done to avoid burning the variegation and hopefully getting your Moscom to bloom one day. Thank you for watching. I wish you a beautiful, beautiful day on one condition though, that you stay safe and take care. Bye.